This is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the sensible heat equation and also where it comes from. So that way we're connecting the technical part with the fluid mechanics or thermodynamics part. All right, so let's start writing the equation. So sensible heat equation is going to be equal to Q 1.08 times CFM times delta T. So the way I call this equation is actually, this is a very much practical equation. So what we use in the field, practical equation, practical equation, okay? So, and also, and also sometimes other books or other books or other references, they say 1.1 times CFM times delta T. Okay, so that is the practical equation or that is pretty much, uh, those are my words actually, practical equation, but actually this is called the sensible heat equation, sensible heat. That's the sensible heat, okay? Sensible heat, but uh, in this video we're gonna be saying, like we're gonna be checking on where does the sensible uh, heat come from, okay? So actually this comes from this fluid mechanics and thermodynamics equation, which is Q equals to mass times C times delta T. So that's the sensible heat equation and we're gonna put what is each variable. So M is mass. Mass C is specific heat. Specific heat. And delta T is gonna be change in temperature. Change in temperature. Change in temperature. Temperature. All right, so we gotta understand very well that uh, what are what the units are for this uh, each variable. So mass pounds specific heat actually is going to be in uh, BTUs. Let's just put that BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit, and then the uh, change in temperature is going to be Fahrenheit. All right. So those are the variables of the, this is the actual sensible heat, sensible heat. So in order to make it, to differentiate this, what we're gonna do is we call, I would say this is the practical equation that we're gonna be using already in order for, uh, in order to obtain the CFM or the Delta T in order to do calculations for the furnaces or HVAC systems. And this would be, let's say, the original equation. So uh, I'm gonna put that into the yellow color right here. And then this is sensible heat. Let's say this is the original formula. Original formula. Formula. So if you go to the books and you Google or do something, so in here they will tell you Q is, uh, sensible heat is equal to the mass times a specific heat times delta T. But in practical, in a practical way, um, if you're trying to do some calculations with the furnace or with the coil, you have the Q equals 1.08 times CFM times delta T, okay? So now, the, just to make it different, so that's the practical and that's the original formula, all right? So how, how do we come from this original formula to the practical formula? How, how is that? So this is just general knowledge because whenever you're, whenever you're doing some calculations with the furnace or the coil, you just need to apply this equation and then you're going to be able to understand what is the sensible heat or the CFM in order to obtain this change in temperature. However, uh, this is just extra knowledge. Where does, how, how this is, where this is coming from? So uh, in order to obtain that, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the sensible heat, which I call the original formula, okay? I'm not saying that this is this one is a copy, but <laughs> it's just like, so it's more understandable. So Q equals M times C times delta T. So what is M? So this is, I'm going to make a quick change in here. So M, see, I just want to be consistent with the colors right here, but let's just put M. M 
equals the following. So it's going to come from density. But you know what? Before that, let's talk about the fluid. Which fluid are we talking about? Fluid. Which Is it water? Is it air? So in this case, the fluid that we're going to be talking about is air. Okay? So since we're talking about air, I'm going to use utilize this uh, graph, so in the, this picture. So this is the return air, return air duct. And say that the temperature in here is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so the air is coming down here and it's going to go through the blower. Down here we have the blower. It's a big wheel, it's a squirrel cage. So the blower is going to push the air. And since it's pushing the air, it's going to hit the coil. This is the coil. So let's put in here. This is the furnace. Furnace. So the furnace is only going to be working in, in winter, right? So what happens when it's summer? When it's summer, the coil is the one working. This is the coil, all right? So the coil inside this box, there is an eight type coil, which is very cold. Um, let's say, okay, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It could be colder and everything else. There we go. And then this is going to go to the supply air temperature, living air temperature. All right, so we have supply air, return air, and what we have is this is, let's say that this is for summer, summer, okay? We are in summer, so that's why the return air temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you go to your thermostat, pretty much the thermostat is going to be checking that that is 80 degrees Fahrenheit if your thermostat is working properly, okay? So this is summer, and also in winter, the furnace is gonna be working, and not the coil, okay? So since this is summer, the, the, the furnace is not working, only the coil. However, inside the furnace, we have the blower, or the fan, see? The supply fan or the blower. So the, the blower is sucking air, and is pushing air. And then it's gonna go through this, a cold element which is called the coil so so every in, in in here we're talking about air so that's the basic point so the air has different properties so the air in order to do this calculation this is going to be at standard conditions at standard conditions because the properties of air depends on uh, the state pressure and temperature pretty much so when we're talking about air at the standard the standard air at the standard conditions at the standard air conditions okay when you're saying the standard air condition that uh, that means uh, the following that means that uh, in order to obtain the properties we are assuming it's like an assumption we're assuming that the temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit at 50% relative humidity and at sea level. At sea level. So that's what is a standard air conditions. That's the air at the standard air conditions. So what is the fluid? Air and then what are the properties or properties of air? So in order to do that, what I need is the density and the specific heat. Okay, because we have in here mass. We're not going to change anything about the delta T. We're only going to change about the mass and the specific heat. We're not changing about anything about the delta T. So mass. What I'm going to change the mass in terms of volume. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is, let's just do this in yellow. So that way everyone understands. So density equals to mass divided by volume. Therefore, mass equals density times volume, okay? Rho means density times volume, okay? I don't want to make this complicated. Just bear with me a little bit more. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm plugging this formula in this, what I call the original formula, all right? So let's put, let's plug that in, in here. And then that's going to be Q equals mass but mass let's put this with pink <laughs> pink so mass equals density times volume density times volume times of course we're going to have still the specific heat 
okay and also it's important to remember that a specific heat is at constant pressure because there's a, a specific heat at constant volume and there's a specific heat at constant pressure so this one is at constant pressure times delta t there we go so we have density times volume times uh, a specific heat times delta t so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to rearrange this variable so this is density times a specific heat at constant pressure times volume times delta t okay so here we go we have the delta t and we have the volume actually this volume is going to be the air volume that's going to be converted into cfm c uh, cubic feet per minute okay so as of now what we have is uh, cubic we want to have cubic feet per minute airflow okay so what is the density and a specific heat of air at standard conditions okay so i'm gonna put that in red so if you go to google so nowadays it's very uh, living in on these times uh, it's very important because we have every single thing at, in, in in our phone so if you put in your phone in google you're going to find out that air at the standard conditions have a density of 0. Point, <coughs> 0. 0.075 pounds per cubic feet okay and the density and then the specific heat at constant pressure is going to be equal to 0. 0.24 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit degree okay so these are these are numbers that we're, we're able to obtain if we go to if we just do our research and then we do at a standard condition so now that we have these variables what we're going to do is we're going to just plug that in here in this equation so what we're going to have is the following this is going to be a kind of long equation so q which is the sensible heat is going to be equal to density so density equals to 0 0.075 pounds per cubic feet okay times a specific heat at constant pressure which is 0 0.24 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit times volume the volume but the volume I want this to be in CFM that's gonna be in cubic feet per minute so cubic feet per minute would be cubic feet per minute and you know what let's put that in here that cubic feet per minute is what we called CFM right airflow cubic feet per minute okay and then we're gonna have in here times Delta T and what are the units of Delta T by the way the units of Delta T are gonna be Fahrenheit so in order to make in order to differentiate this from every these variables what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into brackets okay so the units are in brackets there you go units in brackets there we go and the units in here in brackets okay all right so what do we want to obtain the Q which is the sensible heat is going to be in what it's going to be in BTUs per hour there we go so uh, in order to make this possible what we're going to do now is pounds with pounds go away let's use yes and then cubic feet con cubic feet goes away we have BTUs per minute oh Fahrenheit with Fahrenheit goes away and now what we have is as a, as a result BTUs per minute but we want BTUs per hour therefore we're going to multiply this see times S there is 60 minutes in one hour and this is these are my units and then minutes with minutes go away and I have finally BTUs per hour so that's how so now what we're do gonna do is multiply 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.075 0.24 and 60 and then if we multiply 
uh, those numbers, we're going to obtain the 0 0.08 CFM times delta T. So that's the sensible heat equation, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this video, but uh, just a couple of things more. This is very important that we have to understand that, I mean, for me, it used to be confusing sometimes, but this sensible heat is just taking care of changing temperature. Sensible heat only takes care of changing temperature. It doesn't take care of the humidity. So for, for our next videos, what I'm going to be doing is the following. See? So today we talked about the sensible heat, sensible heat equation. All right? Then on the next videos, we're going to be talking about the latent heat. Okay, the latent heat is the one that takes care, in, uh, takes care of the humidity. So, uh, so when we're using utilizing the AC at home, it has two purposes, right? So purpose number one is to reduce the temperature, and purpose number two is to dehumidify the house itself. So that's why this takes care of the temperature, okay? This reduces the temperature, and this is going to reduce the relative humidity. Uh, so, and then we have sensible heat, latent heat, and the total, we have a total heat. Total heat. Th those are going to be for the next videos, but those are very important topics, okay? So the total heat is going to be completely a combination of the latent heat plus the sensible heat. And when you see that your condenser outside and your coil, they are a two-ton unit, for example. Let's put example. I have my system that is a two-ton unit. This is pretty much the total heat. So when I was um, uh, making a comment that uh, sometimes this uh, this equation is very important, and we have to notice that the sensible heat is uh, something that we have to be aware of. Is at times we put instead of Q two ton, so we do two ton delta T, and we obtain the CFM. But that two ton actually is not the sensible heat. That's actually the total heat. So yes, and this, and also the last part is that um, so. In order to obtain the delta T, we just have the return air temperature, the supply air temperature, and then this is the coil, that is the furnace, and inside the furnace we have the heat exchanger, also the sensible heat, okay? Since the sensible heat accounts for changing temperature, is not only for cooling, it's also for heating. So, uh, possibly, yeah, in maybe in the next video we're gonna be talking about sensible heat applied to the furnace or applied to coal to the coil. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up or give it a like and subscribe and share. All right, thank you very much.